so we run kind of a lot of programs at the Friendship Center, uh, as long with our harm reduction, uh, overdose prevention site, kind of a safe injection site. Um, we also do like a drop-in for people to use phone, uh, just kind of help them get resources where they need to. Uh, we uh, have food here Monday to Friday for lunches and seven days a week we do breakfast usually just porridge and coffee every morning uh, and we have a big housing team as well here four winds housing team we run a lot of programs as well too through our uh, mental health workers she does like for example some anger management ones or some ptsd courses or uh, healing through the arts well when it's a safe place for people to use right like especially when we have a crisis going on with fentanyl uh, not all of them feel safe Right, so in here in this building, we are using safely. Uh, they are using in front of a uh, paramedic who, um, you know, is well trained. It's a lot easier to, to reverse this way, um, as well as like giving out clean supplies and reducing the the spread of HIV and you know reducing the the cost of healthcare and. and people in beds in the hospitals and the amount of trucks that need to go out for overdoses, you know, so. And you mentioned this earlier, but just having maybe some provincial funding might help. Yeah. And, and how would it help? Yeah, well, it would definitely help by, you know, probably ex extending our hours into the evening or, you know, growing some more, maybe getting those smoking rooms because a lot of the overdoses that I've been doing outside is because of people smoking outside and, you know, the, most of the people who are injecting are in my room mostly all of them right and unless we're closed and when we're closed then they don't have anywhere else to go and use but essentially where we're at now is the drugs the drug business world is nine to four in our in our building and i don't think that's appropriate so